interesting lesson study we have for a very long time is really this week lesson studies. It deals with covetousness. It doesn't matter how small or how large your offering is. It should be kept flowing into the house of God because that is a means of letting the gospel move forward, onward. This liberal giving is what we need to really have. However, I did make mention of the fact that the way of advancement on a building of the cause of God is blocked by selfishness, pride, covetousness, extravagance, and love of display. It says the whole church is charged with a solemn responsibility to lift every branch of the work. If its members follow Christ the way they should, they will deny the inclination for display, the love of dress, the love of elegant houses and costly furnitures. And you will find that in Seven Testimony to the Churches, pages 296 and the paragraph 2. This self-denial will help us to develop good habits and to develop good character, which will win us the approbation. Well done, the good and faithful servant, and make us fit to dwell forever in the presence of the one who became poor for us, that we may become rich through the inheritance of eternal riches. Judas and Mary, look at that. In Judas's heart was filled with covetousness. Judas says it, was, it would be better for the oil that Mary used to anoint Jesus to be sold and the money given to the poor. When at the same time, Judas was planning on selling Jesus, really, basically. Because Judas sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, far less the price than what the bottle of oil cost that Mary used to anoint Jesus. Covetousness was in Judas' heart. Gratitude, appreciation, feeling good for what Jesus has done and what he's doing was in Mary's heart. If you look in early writing on page 268, it says, every selfish, covetous person will fall out by the way. Like Judas, who sold his Lord, will sell good principles and a noble and generous disposition. All such will be sifted out from God's people. We may have covetousness in our heart, but in the end, it's going to surface because evil cannot be where God is supposed to be and God is supposed to be on the throne of our heart. It's going to, in the end, it's going to expose what is in the heart. So if selfishness is there, then sift it out and we lose our way. I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging you and I'm encouraging myself. Let us try to be generous in giving and ask God to remove selfishness, pride, extravagance, and covetousness from our lives that we're better able to meet him, that we will not be sifted out on the way.